Father, in the name of Jesus, salamat po sa iyong kabutihan sa aming buhay. Thank you that we had the opportunity earlier to just lift our hands and praise you and worship you. Truly, Lord God, as we sang earlier, you deserve our highest praise. Let that be the cry of our hearts, not just today, not just on Sundays, but every single day. You have created us for a purpose and many purposes, Lord God, but one of them is to worship you. And so we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of you who agree, say, Amen, Amen. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, Let's go! All right. So, if you notice, the, uh, for the month of March, we've been focusing our preaching on talking about worship. All right? What is worship? Uh, we talked about, uh, two weeks ago when I shared, I talked about how the king of the nation or the leader of the nation realized the importance of true worship and how that king, Josiah, you know, restored worship in Israel and because he restored worship, it opened up many blessings to the nation. Amen? How many of you know as a family, if you worship together as a family, you are opening the door for, you know, you are already blessed in Christ. You need to know that. If you are in Christ, you are already blessed. But there's so much more that God has for you and for me. Amen? And I believe that worship puts us in the right position and it opens the door to receive, but also to give back to God as He has so graciously given to us. Amen po ba? And then last week, Pastor talked about uh, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, meaning we are the temple of worship. Because how many of you know that the temple was the place where worship was done? And so you, you say me. me. See, I am the place of worship. Yes, we come together here and worship together and there is a corporate anointing. But you must understand that wherever you go, wherever you are, Jesus told the Samaritan woman, there will come a time that you neither worship in this place or that place only. See, he didn't say you're not going to worship there anymore. But you will worship God in spirit and in truth and that will be in your life. You worship God with your lives. Your body was created to worship Him. Amen? And that's where I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue from that point that God has created you, your body, your life as a place of worship. Amen? And from that place of worship, we are going to, so you can understand the heart of worship. Do you want me to make a about coming back to the heart of worship? So if you're looking for a title for today's message, let's just talk about the heart of worship. But before we get into the heart of worship, we just want to emphasize what Pastora left off last week. That you, your body, your life was created to worship God. Amen? And I want to share that in Revelations chapter 4, verse 11. So if you have your Bibles with you, bring them out now. If it's in your application, in your phone or your tablet, bring them out now. If you, you want to take notes, you can do so now. But if you just want to sit and listen, sige lang. Whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you receive the most, because that's what's my desire. I don't want to put on you a way to receive. Naitindihan niyo po. Because everybody receives differently. But what I do want to emphasize is this. I pray that you receive something. However way that you, you, you receive from the Lord. Some people, nag-receive sila sa mga notes. Ako, I'm not like that. Ako, gusto ko makinig lang. Tumingin, makinig. And then, sige, afterwards, balikan ko yung notes ng ibang tao na hindi ko sinulat. Diba? Because, because, you know, because I, I like, that's how, I'm, 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 I'm that kind of person. I like to understand. Not just, because sometimes when you're writing notes, you don't understand. But some people, ang bilis pag notes, ah, amen, hallelujah, or ang bilis mag-type sa phone. Diba? Parang gukuha na kuha sila. But I believe we're all created differently. And I believe God created us uniquely. Amen? Hindi tayo unique low, but we are uniquely created. Amen? And because we are created uniquely, we have our own special way. So whatever way you can receive from God, just do it. 
Basta makareceive lang kayo today. Amen? So, if you are there, say, I'm there. Of course, if you're not, it's there. Okay po? Nandun naman po. So, it says here, just a bit of a background of anong nangyayari dito. In the Revelations, John had an encounter with God in the middle of his prison. So John was in prison. He was in the lowest dungeon of the prison. And he had an encounter with God. And I just want to encourage you, whatever you feel you may be in your life today, whatever season, whatever you are going through, whether you feel free or whether you feel bound, whether you, you feel that you're up high and lifted up or you feel that you're in a low, up mountain, up in the mountain or low in the valley, whether you feel that you're in the palace or you're in the prison, Wherever you may be in life and everywhere in between, you have the opportunity to encounter God. Amen? Because of Jesus Christ, He has given us free access to His presence. Unlike in the Old Testament, where they had to offer a sacrifice in order to get holy enough to come into God's presence, Today, Jesus Christ, as Pastor Ben shared earlier, if you were here earlier, if not, you know, you can watch it online in this message. Today, Jesus Christ has offered one sacrifice for sin forever that that, because of His sacrifice, we have free access into the very glory and presence of God. And as we worship, it is a way for us to enter in. Yes, we are the temple of the Spirit. Yes, we have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. But there is a time that we can come in a manifest presence that not just our spirit is in encountering God, but your whole being, spirit, soul, and body is able to encounter God. Amen? And worship gives us that access. So here is John in prison, in the lowest place, God visits him where he is. How many of you know that God knows where you are and he's willing to go to you wherever you are? Amen. That's why when you say, ah, sa mga nanonood, ayoko muna mag-church kasi ayusin ko muna ang buhay ko. No. You can never get your life right without him. So come here. Come on site. We love you. We miss you. Especially on April 3 onwards kasi we have so much more space. But even now, madami pang upuan. No, konti na lang. But even now, we just come, join us, and let's worship God together. Amen? Amen. So in this revelation in which he writes the book, Revelation, John sees the heavenly, and one thing he noticed about heaven is that they're continually worshiping God. And that's one thing I want to remind you about, that we will forever be worshiping God. And in this chorus, of beauty and angelic hosts and saints that are filling the place, lifting praise to our Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. He hears a phrase, he hears many words, but a phrase that cuts what I want to share, one phrase that I want to share with you today. And this phrase, it says, with all of them singing in chorus, in one accord, I can imagine how wonderful that is. And they all sing together, You are worthy. Karapat dapat ka o Diyos. See, God's worthiness is not based on what you're going through. God's worthiness is based on who He is. And they declared, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. What were they doing? They were worshiping. You deserve the highest praise. You deserve the highest honor. You deserve the highest glory. You deserve the highest power. You deserve it all. And they were saying this, and then they continue. They say, for or because you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. So how many of you here believe that God created you? That you did not just evolve. You were created by God. And the Bible says you were fearfully and wonderfully made. Some of us wonderfully, some of us fearfully made. Amen? 
No, but you have to understand the word fearfully means hindi nakakatakot. The word fearfully means worshipfully. Oh, so I'd like to be safe fearfully made because that means God made me to worship Him. Come on, did you hear me? You were worshipfully and wonderfully made by God. That tells me that I am a good, not naman a good person, but a good creation. Amen? And I believe we are all good creations of God. Because whenever God created in the, in the beginning, He said it was good. But when, we get, when He got the man, He said, very good. Amen. You're not just good, you're very good. So it's, it's time you begin to look at yourself as very good. Amen. When was the last time you looked into the mirror and you said, wow, very good. You know, this morning I woke up and I said, wow, when you're with the Lord, talagang pabata ka ng pabata. You think that you're, you're, the outer man may be decaying, but the inner man is renewing. Sometimes even the outer man is being renewed. You wake up, you go to sleep with white hair and white beard, and you wake up the next morning and it's brown. And you're like, glory to God in the highest. Amen. So actually, I want to tell you something, a secret. You know, I have been dyeing my hair white and gray and my beard white because they said the older you are, the more people will respect you. So, tinadai ko siyang puti para ma-respeto mo ako. But I think I've gained your respect already. So, binalik ko na yung tunay na kulay ko. Okay ba? Okay ba? So, now I'm looking my age. So, I'm not, as, I'm not older than my wife. My wife and I are the same age. Okay? Naintindihan mo? Clear na ba yan? So, huwag mo sabihin, Paso, ano yari sa'yo? Tinanggal ko na yung puti. Kasi, gusto kong pakita sa inyo, anong totoong age ko, di ba? And sabi ng Bible, do not, you know, do not neglect your youth. Do not forsake your youth. So, sige, Lord, papakita ko na yung kabataan ko na binigay mo sa akin. Anyway, going back to worship. Sana ko pumunta. Going back to worship. You were created wonderfully by God. Amen? Amen? And it's time you begin to see yourself how God created you to be. You are a wonderful person. Come on, tell somebody that. You are a wonderful person. Kahit hindi, mo, kahit hindi mo kilala sila, sabihin mo. Okay lang yan. Kasi by faith naman ang ginagawa natin dito minsan, di ba? But you are also, you are also worshipfully made. You were made to worship God. And that's what this verse is saying. That we created all things and it is by your will. Meaning, we were created to give God glory. We were created to give God glory honor and we were created to give God praise or power. We were created to give our worship to God. That is why you need to understand that worship is not just a natural or emotional expression of our gratitude to God. Many people think, ano yung worship? Well, it's the way that I express my thanksgiving to God dahil mabuti ang Diyos. Totoo bang mabuti ang Diyos? So, people would think that worship is a natural or emotional expression of our gratitude to God. But if you're going to limit worship to that, then you're going to limit worship to when you feel or when your situation is in line to give Him thanks. But how many of you know it's not always going to be in line? Your emotions are not going to want to praise God sometimes. You're not going to want to go to church sometimes. You're, maybe today you forced yourself to come to church. But good job, you made it. Congrat congratulations. You made it. You made the best decision to come to church today. Amen? So again, worship is not a natural or emotional expression of our gratitude to God but it is a spiritual and eternal purpose that was created in us by Him. Do you get it? Worship is not a natural or emotional expression of our gratitude to God, but it is a spiritual and eternal purpose that God created in us by Himself. Amen? you were created to worship God in the very core of your being. Amen? 
in the very purpose, the very reason you live is to worship Him. And not just you, I believe every creation of God. Every time you look around and you see the beauty of nature, you say, wow, ang galing talaga ni Lord. Amen? All creation. And then one of the persons in the Bible who understood this was a person named David. Kilala niyo ba si David? Si David was one of the kings. But they, but said of David is one of the greatest, I guess, one of the greatest compliments a person can receive. And we found this, we find this compliment in Acts chapter 13, verse 22. The author of Acts here, which is Luke, as we understand, is writing and he's telling them about David. So let's look at this. Acts 13, verse 22 says, And when he, or the Spirit of God, had removed Saul, because he was previously talking about King Saul, he raised up from them, from the people of Israel, David as king, to whom also God gave David this testimony. And God said of David, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart who will do all my will. I believe one of the greatest compliments that we can get is that we are a people or a church that are after God's own heart. Amen? And David was a worshiper. And the book of Psalms, many, many Psalms were written by David. So I would say that a heart after God is a heart of worship. Amen? If you are wanting that compliment, I want to be that kind of person, Lord. I want to be a, a person that would be said of me in my testimony, you know, by when I'm alive and even when I'm gone, that I was a person after your own heart. I want to encourage you, if you have a heart of worship, you have a heart after God. Amen? And so I want us to look in one of his Psalms, in Psalms 63. I want us to look at this Psalm and we're going to see and try to unpack if we can see in this psalm, ano bang ibig sabihin ng a heart of worship or a heart after God. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right. So a little background of Psalm 63. It was written by David when he was in the wilderness. Now, when the Bible talks about wilderness, anong naisip mo? Ano ba naisip mo sa wilderness? Anong place? Desert. Remember that. Every time you hear wilderness sa Bible, it means desert. Desert, walang tubig. Ang desert, dry. Ang desert, mainit. Ang desert, hirap kumain, hirap iminom. Nanunuyot ka. Have you ever had a period in your life na feeling mo nanunuyot ka? That you feel that you're dried up spiritually, emotionally. Have you ever been dried up emotionally? Yung palang binigay mo ng lahat, parang, Lord, wala na mapigas ka sa akin. Iniyak ko na tong lahat, wala nang luha na titira sa buhay ko. Ang drama mo, Pastor, okay lang. Yung iba dyan nakaka-relate, di ba? Ayaw mo lang abinin. Smile lang dyan. Di ako yan. Ikaw lang yan. <laughs> you know, sometimes we feel in that place. And David was physically, emotionally. Why was he emotionally? Because David was kicked out of Israel by his own son. His son Absalom, because Absalom wanted to be king. And he came, he bred, he led a revolt. So he was not just physically, but emotionally in a desert. But thanks be to God, he wasn't spiritually in the desert. Amen? Because you can see by how he was writing what it meant to him, how he was feeling. And again, it doesn't matter, or sometimes it does matter, diba? Kung anong nararamdaman natin. But I want to encourage you because if I say it doesn't matter, and I need to be careful what I say. When I say it doesn't matter what you're feeling, you just have to worship God, that may sound like I'm insensitive. Diba? It doesn't matter. Hindi naman ikaw ang dumadaan dito eh. So I want to change my wording. I, I try my best not to say it doesn't matter. I'll try to say regardless of what you are feeling at the moment. Because it doesn't change what you're feeling. 
But regardless of what you're feeling, I believe we have the opportunity to worship God in every season, in every in the fullness and in the drought, we can still worship Him. Amen? So David's situation was really awful, but yet he still found something in him to worship God. So let's take a look at it, all right? Psalm 63, it says, Oh God, you are my God. Early I will seek you. My soul thirsts for you. Look at his, look at his writing. Because you understand he's in the wilderness at physically na uuhaw siya. But he didn't talk about a physical thirst. He talked about an emotional. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land. Can you get the picture? There is no water. But yet, in the, with everything that's going on, he says, my God, you are my God. So I looked for you in your sanctuary. To see your power and your glory. Meaning, I'm not going to look at my situation. I'm going to look to you where you are. Verse 3. Because your loving kindness, your grace, your mercy, your goodness are better than my life right now, my situation right now. And because of that, my lips shall praise you. Verse 4. Thus, I will bless you while I live. I will lift my hands in your name. See, he's going beyond the situation. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. Verse 6, when I remember you in my bed or when I rest, and I meditate on you in the night watches, what happens? Because you have been my help, Therefore, in the shadow of your wings or in your covering, I will rejoice. Verse 8 to end. My soul follows closely behind you and your right hand upholds me. Amen? So this is a psalm that David writes. And I want us to see things here. And hopefully as we look at it, we will see because David had a heart after God or a heart of worship, it will give us maybe some things that maybe we can understand. So let's go back to verse 1. It says, My God, you are my God. Early I will seek you. And many people can think early as a time. A time in the day. Meaning sa umaga, I will praise you. Sa gabi, I will praise you. But I want to encourage you that this word early can also mean your age. And that is why I thank God for what's going on right behind this wall at the moment. Because behind that wall, there are children. And, and, and if, they, if we put them here and they hear me talking, they will surely sleep. Why do I know? Because even the adults, when I'm talking, natutulog sila. So imagine pa yung mga bata. So kung yung mga, kaya kung may nakita kayo natutulog, sabihin mo, sayang, gising-gising. Parang kinakaya yung gising-gising naman. So, we want to make, so we have that there not for you to leave your children and you can focus on God, but we make sure that at an early age, these children understand who God is and they understand that they can worship Him because He is a good God. And I want to let you know that whatever age you are, it's never too early to worship God. And that's why David said, early I will worship, I will seek you. The earlier your children find out about God, know who He is, know what He has done, understand who Jesus is, the earlier they will experience His glory, they will experience His presence. You know, don't you just love it? And those of you who have kids, or maybe, you know, you know younger kids that, you know, in the middle of worship, bigla lang nagtataas ng kamay yung bata. And you're like, ay, galing ng anak ko. Nag-worship kay Lord, oh. Or ang apo ko, ang galing mag-worship. Pero nakita lang niya mga tao nagtataas ng kamay. Nanggagaya lang pala. But ikaw naman, ay, 
worshiper anak ko, worshiper anak ko. Paglaki niya, nako, pastor, o papa-audition ko yan sa church. Kasi worshiper. Yeah. Praise God. And we pray that they also, they worship in spirit, in truth, and in tune. Amen? Yan ang requirement namin dito. The worshiping in spirit, in truth, and in tune. Amen? Yan ang requirement. You wanna join us? You worship in spirit, in truth, and in tune. In Jesus' name. And then you have a place for us here. Amen? A heart of worship is experienced, you know, even at a young age. But pastor, late na ako nag-worship, okay lang yan. The, I believe there, the, at least you're a worshiper now. Amen? It doesn't matter if you started young or if you started later on in life. At least if you have a heart of worship now, that's what's important. Ang importante talaga is ngayon, you have a heart of worship. So, I want to encourage you parents or you grandparents at a very young age, begin to introduce your children to Jesus and allow them to have free expression. You know, in Psalms 8, 1 and 2, it says, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. That's another song. In all the earth, you have set your glory in the heavens. And it goes on to verse 2. I love this. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a refuge, a stronghold, a protection against your enemy to silence the foe and the avenger. Do you know that worship builds a spiritual protection around you? Amen. And even children, as children begin to worship God, they are already at a young age building protection, building a spiritual hedge or a spiritual refuge around them so that when they are growing up, they will not be influenced by the world that's going on, but they're going to understand who God is. They're going to understand how good their God is. And no matter what the world would offer them, sex, drugs, or rock and roll, but there's some rock and roll that's good naman, di ba? They are still going to go after the things of God. Amen? Because at an early age, they understood they were created to worship Him. Alright? Alright. Did you get that? Number one, even at an early age, we have the honor to praise and worship God. Going back, Psalm 63, 1. O God, you are my God. Early I will seek you. My soul, not my flesh, but my soul thirsts for you. Amen? I believe that in all of us, God has already birthed or placed in us a hunger and thirst for His presence. That humanity was created to seek God, and humanity understands that without Him, kulang ang buhay. You know, there are many successful people in the world. Napakayaman. Napaka-influential. They have so much. And all of us look at them and say, grabe, blessed sila. But you know, let me tell you, yes, they are rich. Yes, they have so much. But if they don't have God, they will not truly experience that state of blessedness. Because that only comes from an encounter and an indwelling presence of God in your life. They will forever be looking for more because they always feel na may kulang. And there is a void in people's heart that only God can fill because when God created humanity, He created them with Him. The design was He being in them. And until we have that presence in us, we will be constantly hungering and thirsting for His presence. It is indwelling in all humanity that they would hunger and thirst. And even us who have the presence, we always want more of you, Lord. You know, yesterday, with the volunteers came here yesterday, and we just really had the time in God's presence. And we're not going to tell you what happened. Just come to the next. If you're a volunteer, just come to our next volunteers' home, uh, homecoming. But we really had a time and of presence. And I believe many were filled. Amen? 
Yung mga pumunta kahapon, were you filled? Yeah. Amen. And I believe that's not just in volunteers meeting, but we can have it every single time. We can have it in church. We can have it at home. Why? Because God's design is to fill those who hunger and thirst. Bible says in Matthew 5, 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. When you seek for Him, you will find Him if you seek Him with all your heart. Amen? Amen? Yes. You know, Jesus speaking in the book of John, He declared about a thirst. But He kind of explained the thirst in a, in, in a way. John explained the thirst in a way that is applicable for you and me today. In John 7, verse 37 to 39, it says, On the last day of the great feast, Jesus stood and cried out in the middle of everyone, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come after me and drink. See, the thirst that we are looking for can only be filled by Jesus. He said, If anyone thirsts, you just uminum kayo. No. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. As the scripture has said, for out of his heart will flow rivers. You see, when Jesus gives, when we drink water, like I need to drink water right now, kasi nasa thirst ako. Excuse me lang po. See, I was thirsty right now. My throat was dry and I needed to drink water to quench my thirst. It fills me. But the water that Jesus gives doesn't just fill you. It causes you to overflow with what He has given you. See, worship is an expression of that overflow. Amen? Like I said, worship is not emotional. It's spiritual. As Scripture has said, out of you will flow rivers. Out of their heart, out of their soul and their spirit will flow rivers of living water. But this Jesus spoke concerning the Spirit of God, whom those believing in Him would receive. Do you believe in Jesus? then you have the Spirit of God. Amen? You have that river of living water. But there are still times that we thirst for more. Amen? And that's why the Bible says, be continually filled. It's not just a one-time infilling, but it is a continual filling that we can have. You know, today, takot tayo mag-fill, di ba? Especially kung may kotse ka. Natatakot tayo mag-fill up, di ba? Kasi nakikita mo, and then many people say, grabe yung gasolina, parang grades ko lang yan eh. Di ba? Yan yung uso ngayon. Pero di ako makarelate eh. Kasi yung grades ko, puro nine eh. <laughs> yeah, bang. De, but I, I pray it never gets up that high, Lord. Balik mo na sa 29 pesos per liter, Lord. In Jesus. Don't you miss that? Yung 29 pesos ang gasolina at 12 pesos ang diesel per litro. Ay, Lord, bring it back, bring it back. Anyway, but you see, it's expensive to fill in the natural. But in the spiritual, it's free. And you can be filled to the overflow. Why? Because when we are in His presence, when we worship, as we thirst, He will fill us. But wherever we go, we are now overflowing with worship. Amen? Overflowing with His presence. Going back to Psalm 63, So I have looked for you in your sanctuary. In the Old Testament, God was limited to a place, to a tabernacle, to a temple, to a room, to a safe place, a sanctuary. So David says, I will look for you in the place where God is. But when Jesus Christ died on the cross and He breathed His last breath, the Bible said that the ground shook and the very foundation of the temple shook that it cracked the very floor of the temple. And the veil which separated the priests from the presence, from the sanctuary, was ripped apart. This means that we now have free access to enter in and the Spirit of God 
has free access to go forth into all the world. In Christ, we have free access into His presence. Amen? Yes, you have the Spirit in you, but you have free access into His presence. Psalms 100 sings this song. It says, make a joyful shout. Come on, make a joyful shout. Come on, make a joyful shout. To who? To the Lord. All you lands. Serve the Lord. May mga volunteers ba dito? Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence. How? With singing. Why? Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who made us. And doing not ourselves. We are His people. And we are the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates. How do we enter into God's presence? With thanksgiving. Enter into His courts with our worship, our praise. As we enter and we give thanks, we enter in or He enters into our situation. Remember when the veil was torn? I said it gives us access to go in, but it also gives Him access to go to us. So when we worship God, yes, we get into His presence, but you allow His presence to come into your situation. You see, when God's presence is in your situation, you now give Him the freedom to change and to make His will be done. Amen? Why do we need Him to enter into our situation? Why? Hebrews 4.16 says this, Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of His grace, the sanctuary, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us every time we need. Anybody here in need? Anybody here in need of mercy? Anybody here in need of God's grace? I'm lifting my hands. How about you? How many of you need God's mercy and grace in your life? How many of you know that when you worship Him, you enter in to that sanctuary, that safe place? And He enters in and makes your situation his safe place. Amen? There's more. You want to hear more? See, a heart of worship understands that we have access into His presence. Heart of worship knows that there's a birth in us, a hunger and thirst for Him. Heart of worship is even at a young age, we can have a heart to worship God. Number four, because of your loving kindness is better than life, my my lips next verse shall praise you I will bless you while I live I will lift up my hands next verse my soul oh we worship God not just in our lips not just with our hands we worship God with our soul our emotions our feeling you know the the the, the another psalm psalm 34 Verse 1 to 3 says this, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt His name together. And you know what happens when you do that? Verse 8 says, you will be able to taste and see that the Lord is good. So we worship God with our bodies. We worship God with our soul. How about our spirit? Psalm 86.12 says this, I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my... Your heart is your soul and your spirit. I will glorify your name forever. The heart of worship expresses worship in your full existence. Your body, your soul, and your spirit. It's not just your spirit worshiping, your emotions are worshiping, and your body is worshiping. Amen? A heart of worship is everything. I give God my everything, and I worship God with everything. And finally, as we go, you stand to your feet, church. 
because you have been my help therefore in the shadow of your wings I will rejoice in God's presence you see the shadow of God's wings means that he is surrounding you like a mother hen would surround her chick so he says because I'm worshiping you and you're so good I will dwell in this position that your wings are covering me can I tell you that in God's presence there is unlimited limitless blessings and as we go today as you go I want to declare Psalms 91 over you amen I'm gonna declare so if you're here today and you are you know I, I want or I may be or I want to have a heart of worship and you want to receive the benefits of being a worshiper as we're praying right now lift up your hands and as I read the word let me tell you I'm not just reading the word I'm going to prophesy the word prophesy means to speak the word over you so as I read Psalms 91 today receive this as your own amen even those of you guys who are watching online stand up where you are if you have the ability to stand up lift your hands as a way to show that you are ready to receive and as I declare this take it in your heart as your own I declare this word to you New Life North Metro and to those who are listening that you who dwell in the secret place of the Most High you shall abide under the shadow of His wings of the Almighty and we will say of the Lord He is my refuge God is my fortress my God in you I will trust surely come on do you receive this today surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and he shall deliver you from perilous pestilence and the plague he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings we all shall take refuge his truth his word shall be your shield and your buckler and you shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that walks in darkness nor the destruction that lays waste in the news in the noonday listen a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand shall fall at your right hand but it shall not come near you only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the Lord who is your refuge even the most high your dwelling place no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling for God will charge his angels over you to keep you in all your ways in their hands they shall bear you up lest you injure your foot against a stone you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot and because God has set his love and because you have set your love upon him therefore God will deliver you God will set you on high because he knows your name and you shall call upon him and he will answer and he will deliver you from trouble and deliver you with honor and with long life he will satisfy you and he will show you his salvation and his delivery and let everything that has breath praise the Lord Come on, praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name. Bless your holy name. Bless your holy name. 
Father, we thank you that we have, you have given us a heart of worship. Just like David, you have put in us a heart of worship. And we will continue to hunger and thirst for more of you, Lord God. Thank you for all the benefits that you have already given us in Christ and in your presence. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of you agree, shout amen.